time to make some waves for change. I'm Mike Gravel, and I'm running for president. Former Alaska Senator Mike Gravel, who famously read the Pentagon Papers into the congressional record back in 1971, is making another run for the Oval, but he is not looking to contest any primaries necessarily. So according to Gravel's campaign, he's running for president to push the Democratic field towards, quote, sane views on American imperialism and the need for fundamental political reform. He'll then endorse the most progressive candidate of the party. So former Senator Gravel joins us now via Skype to expand on this and to share exactly what he wants to see in the Democratic nominee. Senator, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So Senator, one of the most interesting parts of your campaign has been your Twitter account in which you're railing against the political establishment, the Democratic establishment. What do you think it is about the establishment that needs to be changed in the current 2020 election? We need to uh, change the attitude of people accepting American imperialism. Uh, we, we Americans, unfortunately, have this attitude that we're smarter than everybody else, we're better than anybody else, and God has anointed us to, to police the, the world. We need to get off of that and realize that we're no different than anybody else, and we should be acting no different than anybody else. And that means to end American imperialism around the world. Senator, can you just explain for folks who might not be totally read in, why are you running for president specifically, and how are you running your campaign? It's a little bit unique, let's say. In the old days, uh, politicians like, let's take the example of William McKinley, uh, that uh, he would go to his front porch, announce his candidacy, make a speech, and that was it. The rest of it was uh, handled by uh, agents in the various uh, states in question. And so what I'm doing is I'm waging a campaign, not for my front porch, but for my patio and my study. And it's basically uh, operated by uh, David Oaks and, uh, and Williams, Mr. Williams. Uh, it's these young kids, now keep in mind, these people that are running my campaign are 17 and 18 years old. They're very precocious, they're very able, they're doing an unbelievable job. It's not me that's doing that. I gave them my Twitter account, uh, and, uh, and they're Twittering in, in, in my name, and uh, they're doing an excellent job. I have no problems with that. So, um, like, do you look Do you look at all the tweets after they're sent? Do they run them by you? Like, do they print them out for you? Yeah, what does yeah. that look like? No, uh, I, I, I have not looked at their tweets. I've had a friend call me and said, Gravel, you're doing a great job uh, with your tweets. <laughs> And I says, I have not tweeted at all. These are the kids. Now, what we've done is we've gone over the issues, and so we share a belief in the issues that they're articulating and that I have articulated in the past. And, and of course, they're supportive of what really floats my boat, which is empowering the people to make laws, because until we do that, none of this is going to change in any fundamental way. Well, these, these are some very well-educated teens that you found here. They're reading some, some, some very, from some very interesting work, which is exciting quite a bit of people online. Well, let, me, let me correct you. Yeah. I didn't find them. They found me. When, when David called me on the phone and said, we'd like you to run for president, I said, hey, you realize how old I am? And he <laughs> says, well, that doesn't make any difference. What we, what we want to get across is the issues that you're articulating and have articulated in the past. And we buy into that. But what really floated my boat was when he said that they were going to put the creation of the legislature of the people at the top of their priority list. Well, that, that won me over. I've been at that for 25, 30 years and have now uh, got legislation uh, that can be, it's, it's a manual. It's a manual and it'll be published in midsummer. It's a manual to turn around and bring about uh, direct democracy into any country that chooses to empower its people so that they can make laws in partnership with representative government. So I'm not let, me, 
Go ahead. Sorry to cut you off. I, let me read you one of your tweets, and I want to get your, your thoughts on it. I have a question about it. Um, so uh, you slash they tweeted, your average centrist politician is an amoral, soulless husk who wouldn't be fit to babysit. Do people think Bill Clinton, who watched a mentally disabled man die so that he could get racist votes, could care less about them? Is Hillary any different? Booker, Harris, Biden. My question is, what do you say to people who say that part of the reason we have Trump in the White House right now is because of this idea that Hillary wasn't good enough and so folks just stayed home? I mean, do you worry about attacking the folks who are in the race right now so aggressively that they're hobbled when it comes to taking on Trump? Uh, no, if you look back at the race with Hillary, uh, here you had uh, President Obama, Hillary, and Wasserman Schultz, who was the head of the party, the, uh, the managing head of the party. The head of the party is Barack Obama. And they conspired to cheat uh, Bernie Sanders out of the nomination for the Democratic uh, position of running for president. The polls at the time showed that, uh, uh, that Bernie could beat Trump. And so what had happened, because it is conspiracy of the leadership of the Democratic Party, uh, conspired against uh, Bernie, uh, they give us Trump. And so now we look back and say, well, you know, it, it was, it's terrible we got Trump, but who, who brought us Trump? The last president that was there was Barack Obama, and Hillary ran against them, uh, and, and, and all we saw about Hillary was uh, her, her, her sense of warlikeness. I mean, I, I had a feeling when in that election that if Hillary got elected, we'd be at war uh, with with Russia, and there's no reason for that. There's just no reason. Uh, and we 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 go ahead and pillar uh, China, Russia, uh, these other countries. When in point of fact, it's America that's spreading its imperialism and war. Just look at what's going on this day as we talk uh, with the attempted coup in Venezuela. Thousands of kids are going to die because of our sanctions. We did the same thing under Bill Clinton when 500,000 kids died. And, and, and this was attributed to, uh, to, well, this is just the way it works. You know, you've heard the cliche, kill one person and it's murder, kill 100,000 or a million and it's foreign policy. That's what's going on today with American imperialism. So, Senator, I know your plan currently is to wait for two of the primaries and endorse the most progressive candidate. I won't ask you to endorse anybody, but which of your opponents is most out of step with your views and you think should not be in the race at this moment? The most out of step one, and, and, and I was surprised, and I don't know if, it, if the, the, it's accurate, but the, the mayor of uh, in, in Indiana who's running who really doesn't say anything more than the fact that he's gay and, uh, and that energizes the gay community. Let me ask you, Senator Sanders is in the race. He is in most polls second to Joe Biden. I would think it's fair to say he's a pretty progressive guy. Is he someone that you could get excited about? Is he, you know, sort of to the left as, as much as you would want him to be? Does he share most of your views? What's your, what's your sense there? Well, they, they criteria is, of course, in the last election when I was pushed out of uh, the debates by the Democratic leadership, uh, Bernie said, I donated money to Bernie Sanders. I, I think he's got a great domestic agenda. Uh, I thought back then he was a little weak on foreign policy. He himself has admitted that he was weak on foreign policy and he's trying to bring, them up to, bring himself up to speed. Uh, my idea is that the ideal is Chelsea is not uh, is uh, uh, the lady from Hawaii here. I, I've got a senior moment, which of course happens when you're 89. Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard, in my mind, is 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 the most ideal person to become president of the United States. However, she's not uh, 40 years old, uh, and that and people would really look at that askance, but, but she's got six years experience on the Foreign Relations Committee, on the Armed Services Committee. She had the guts to take on Barack Obama over a military issue. She's been, she's, uh, been in the service. She's a major in the reserves. Uh, she's had two tours of duty in, uh, in Iraq. So uh, in my mind, the ideal uh, 
group would be either Bernie as president or Tulsi as president and uh, Bernie as vice president and she as president. So that combination, and of course I, I think uh, 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 Senator Warren of Massachusetts, I think has come out with some very interesting and solid specifics about addressing the problems we have in banking and on the economy. Uh, the, the, other than that, uh, I don't see, and, and let me just for a moment address uh, Biden's, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Biden's candidacy. I know him personally very well. He's a nice guy. I mean, he'll fellow well met. Uh, we could men, meet in the Senate gym uh, and uh, get along very well. But when you when you look at an elected official, what you have to look at what is not, not whether he's just a nice guy or not. What you have to look at what the person represents ideologically, and uh, and and Biden ideologically is off the rails. Oh, he's conventional wisdom, I might say, but conventional wisdom is off the rails in the United States. Uh, Joe, uh, here he was chairman of the Judiciary Committee. Now he wasn't a kid; he he had been in the Congress long enough to know the difference between right and wrong. When he was chairman. He denied the ability to bring in two additional witnesses to what, that would have corroborated uh, Anita Hill. He did that. Then he sat there while he permitted uh, Arlen Specter from uh, Senator from uh, the Republican Senator from uh, from Pennsylvania, as he savaged her like a uh, like a prosecuting attorney savaged Anita Hill. And and Joe Biden sat there and let that happen. Another thing that people forget, uh, and I haven't seen it ma mentioned too often, is uh, uh, Biden was the one that uh, changed the legislation with respect to bankruptcy to better protect the credit card uh, companies and to better protect the banks and to damage to damage ordinary citizens uh, in their ability to start a new economic life uh, and also to be able to stop students from going bankrupt with their excessive student loans, they can't, they can't uh, get rid of these loans by bankruptcy, but they have to take them to the grave with them. They, they, these are the things that Joe has done, uh, and you could make any kind of investigation. He's, he's mistake prone. Uh, he, he, he's done a lot of goofs, and so I don't think he's got legs in this campaign. I think he's going to make a mistake, and it's going to lead to a ridicule. Why he's so supportive in the uh, in the campaign, uh, knows he and Mayor uh, is sucking out the the oxygen uh, is because the mainstream media, which is controlled by the military industrial complex and and uh, and Wall Street, are the ones that are supporting him. Uh, at the, the day that he filed and what he raised six million plus dollars, the the it was two major uh, international companies that were hosting that fundraiser uh, for him. So. <laughs> The, the, where do you think his money's going to come from? It's going to come from the military industrial complex. But as soon as he goofs, why is it that uh, Peter, uh, uh, the mayor, uh, Mayor Pete uh, from Indiana, why has he come up with such popularity uh, by the mainstream media? Very simple. He sucks up the ox oxygen to deny people like Tulsi Gabbard a message which threatens the military industrial complex. And so they're going to use their power which is the control of American mainstream media to deny a visibility. But she's a serving official in government, and so is Bernie, and so it's very difficult to deny them access. When I was denied access, I was not a sitting senator. I gotta right. tell you, if I'd have been a sitting senator, it would have been hell to pay. Then it would have well, been a different deal. <laughs> really quick, Senator, just to make it really clear, your goal is to make the debate stage how far are you from the 65,000 donor threshold? I think you'd be better to ask that question of my campaign manager. We will do that. We will follow yeah. up with that. <laughs> Thank you, yes. sir. Appreciate I, I, your time. Whenever they call me asking me for something, I said, well, where do we stand? Last I heard, we were somewhere around 30,000. Uh, and and apparently, the, uh, we thought that the end of uh, May uh, was the deadline, and not so. We got we got a whole other month. So there's a good likelihood that, uh, that they'll get the required amounts. I'm also very successful, apparently, this is what they report to me, in many of the polls. 
but not the necessary the polls that are uh, that are determined by the Democratic Party. But keep well, we'd mind, like to see those polls. We've got the, yeah. the DFA Pulse poll, I think, had you at 6%, which was higher than Beto and Senator Gillibrand and Senator Klobuchar. So there you go. Democracy for America. They uh, like you over there. This is, this is news to me, and all I can do is smile over it. <laughs> I, I, well, I say I didn't do it. They keep setting up these interviews like this, uh -huh. and so I can just articulate what my views are straight away so we don't have to digest them. And so people can see, am I radical? I don't think so. Of course, mainstream media thinks I'm radical. What's so radical about wanting peace for the world? What's so radical about wanting to take American treasure away from being utilized in an imperialistic policy and use that treasure to benefit education in the United States? I'd like to see an educational system in the United States like they have in Finland, where we pay people to go to school, regardless yeah. of age. The same thing with health care. You know, we spend more money than anybody else, by far, on health care, and, and we don't even get the same results on a par with Canada, with uh, Britain, with other countries. Well, uh, and, I appreciate your commitment to the ideas, and I, for one, hope to see you on the debate stage. I think that'd be very interesting for the country. Extremely interesting. Thank you, sir. <laughs> great, to, great to have you today. Thank you, Senator, for your time. Thank you for paying attention to this message. Thank you very much. And we'll have more rising after this.